Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome to a companion video to the Through the Ages series on the D&D Ranger. Uh, so this video is actually based uh, very heavily on direct feedback that I got from my 4th edition D&D Ranger video. Now the actual like full series was put a bit on hold because I did have a few products come in from Paizo and Wizards of the Coast that I need to do some review videos for, and I also got sick right around that exact same time, which I'm still getting over, it's not 100% yet. Uh, but it's kind of fortuitous that things did get delayed a bit because I'm actually able to slot this video in chronologically before the next installment in the series would have been released, so I'm really happy about that. One of the prevailing comments that I got in that 4E Ranger video was the fact that the player's handbook version of the class really felt too much like a fighter character and not enough like what you would normally think of a ranger class to be. It kind of lacked some of the more nature focus that the class had had since second edition AD&D. And I actually agree with that. I think that is definitely a fair assessment. And when the Player's Handbook 2 would come out, for fourth edition D&D, it actually introduced the primal power source, which I think would have been perfect uh, for the ranger class because the barbarian and the druid were also in the player's handbook too. And it, with third edition, at least, the barbarian, druid, and ranger were always kind of grouped together in the nature-based classes. So I think it would have been better if wizards would have held off on the ranger class until the player's handbook too, so they could take advantage of the primal uh, power source and the theming that that had with it. And if they absolutely had to, they could have brought the Bard over from the Player's Handbook 2 into the Player's Handbook 1 because the Bard class was really uh, just a combination of Martial and Arcane, which were both power sources uh, that were covered in the Player's Handbook 1. So one of the books that was constantly brought up in those comments was Martial Power for D&D 4th Edition. Now, initially, I never picked up any of the power books. I just wasn't interested in it at the time. I know with 3rd Edition, uh, especially 3.5, um, power creep became a very real thing. As more and more books came out, it was just more and more difficult to balance the new options with the pre-existing classes or the design of, like, the, you know, the earlier monster books, just, you know, based on the way that things could be done in combination. And I had heard that that was also an issue with 4th edition, so it kind of kept me away from those. But I kept seeing Martial Power recommended over and over and over again to me, so finally... I decided to go over to DM's Guild, which is you know part of Drive Through RPG, and to see if they had any of the power books available print on demand. And they they had all of them for PDFs, but they only had one of them available print on demand, which just so happened to be Martial Power. So this was the book that a lot of people had mentioned as presenting a new option for the Ranger class that fixed. The, uh, the fact that it felt just too much like a fighter that just does stuff outside. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Beastmaster option provided for you in the Martial Power book. So let's turn to the Ranger section. Each of the four classes presented in this book get their own little uh, section that we go through here. Now I'm not going to go through every single new feature or ability that the Beastmaster Ranger gets. I'm just gonna give you an overview, sort of how they were able to integrate the Beastmaster version of the, uh, the Ranger into the game. And we'll take a look at a couple of abilities that sort of show how they handle having both the Animal Companion and the Ranger character kind of functioning at the same time. So the first thing that we have here with, with the Beastmaster Ranger is the way that it's introduced and the way that you choose it as an option for your character. Now, I actually kind of like this because they decided to have the Beastmaster essentially take the form of a third option for your combat style. So in 4th edition, the Ranger could choose between archery or two-up and fighting, and with the Beastmaster, essentially, you just choose that instead of archery or two-up and fighting. You also do give up the prime shot class feature, uh, but you gain you give that up 
in exchange for having the animal companion. Now, the animal companion is not something that acts fully independent or anything like that of you. Uh, if you want it to attack, you do actually have to give up some of your actions to have the animal companion do things. There are situations where you may want to do that. For example, uh, if you are low on hit points or you just don't have any targets near you, uh, you may want your animal companion to handle the attack. There are abilities in here that they give you where, you know, either you or the animal companion make the attack. And there are things as well when you get into the higher levels that make the animal companion a bit more independent. Now, if your ranger character is incapacitated or otherwise not present in a combat where your animal companion is, then your animal companion can act fully independently. That way it just gives you the ability to sort of stay active in the combat, which I actually kind of like. Uh, so when you take the animal companion, you choose from the uh, the different types that they give here, and we'll sort of get to those in a moment. Uh, each of these has their own uh, stat block that, that they have, so it gives you what their attributes are, what their size is, what their speed is, what their defenses are, which will be a set amount plus your character level, uh, your hit points, which will also uh, go up as you gain levels, uh, their damage, what their attack is, what skills they have, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, their attributes do increase uh, at regular intervals, similar to the way that a player characters would. So at 4th, 8th, 14th, 18th, 24th, and 28th level, uh, the Animal Companion does gain two plus one ability score increases that they can apply one each into two separate stats. And at 11th and 21st level, similar to player characters, uh, they gain plus one to all of their attributes. Uh, you do also gain the, uh, what is it, where is it here, the raise Animal Companion, uh, or sorry, raise Beast Companion Ritual uh, that you can conduct as well. So if your Animal Companion does end up dying, uh, rather than have to go through the process of finding a new one or retraining an animal to become your companion, you can actually do this ritual, which costs 50 gold in resources and takes about four hours of time. But when it's, once it's completed, then your animal companion is brought back to life. So actually, again, I like that because, um, you know, an animal companion dying sucks, especially when it's a key component of your class features. You definitely want that to be around. Uh, and in previous editions, like an animal companion dying has always been like a major setback. Uh, but here, it's something where you can you can sort of bring it back from, from the dead, uh, which is fine. You know, it's, it's a game mechanic that I think works perfectly fine. Uh, so the different uh, types of creatures that we have here, they do prevent, uh, pre present them as, like, basically broad categories. Um, the actual final appearance of your animal companion may vary based on environment. So, for example, uh, they have the bear, and if you live in, like, a forested area, it could be, like, a grizzly bear or a black bear, uh, or if you're from a more northern region, it might look more like a polar bear, but otherwise, all of its statistics are the exact same. Uh, it also mentions, for example, like a, uh, if you are, uh, if you have the lizard companion, and you live in kind of like a swampy area, then it might look more like a, like a alligator, uh, or a crocodile. I, I forget which one is the, the swampy region and it's like one o'clock in the morning and I'm still getting over a sickness. So just be gentle in the comments, please. Uh, but if you're from a different region, like a more arid region, it might be like a monitor lizard, or it could also be something more like a Komodo dragon kind of an appearance. It's just the aesthetics of it that will change. The actual abilities will always remain the same, but I do like the fact that they kind of change what they are based off of some of the, the different regions that you might be from. Uh, so we got the bear, boar, uh, cat, lizard, raptor, which is like a bird of prey, uh, like hawks, eagles, that kind of thing, uh, serpent, spider, and wolf. So those are the categories, and again, they each come with their own attributes, which do uh, change as you go through uh, and progress through levels. Uh, like I said, commanding an animal companion or beast companion, uh, you do give up one of your actions to have it take the corresponding action. So if you want it to move, you give up your move action to direct it to move instead. If you want it to attack, then you have to give up a standard action to direct it to make a basic melee attack against a target uh, of your choice that it has you know, the ability to attack. So that's just for the default things, uh, the way that you can sort of command it. But we are going to be taking a look at some of the new abilities 
that are presented here as well. Like I said, I'm not going to go through all of them because it would just take way too long. Uh, but we will take a look at at least a couple so you can get an idea of how your Beast Companion can sort of shape your... Uh, your uh, your combat abilities. So we'll take a look here just at Predator Strike. This is an at-will ability that you can do. Uh, so this one does actually involve your beast as well as um, yourself, but more indirectly. Uh, so this is an at-will beast martial ability. It is a standard action and the, it has a range of basically five feet or one square uh, around your beast companion. The target is one creature that's adjacent, and the attack uses the beast attack bonus versus armor class. If it hits, it does one, and it gives the letter B there. So normally you would have like one weapon, which is based off whatever weapon you're dealing. In this case, one B. It just means whatever your beast's attack is, it's one die of that damage. So if it's a claw, then it would be whatever the, the, the dice is for the claw, which would be like a d6 or a d8. But it's based off of the beast companion and not your weapons. So it is one uh, of the beast weapon dice plus their strength modifier. However, you do get to add your wisdom modifier to the damage as well. And it's kind of a way, again, you're directing it or you're sort of, you know, using yourself as a distraction to allow your beast to score a bit of a stronger hit. So in this situation where you give up your attack, but you still get to make a decent attack that you are adding uh, some damage to, which I think is actually really, really cool. There are also some of these abilities that you can get that have extra effects based off of which animal companion that you chose. So we're just going to take a look here at Enclose the Prey. So it says your beast companion circles your quarry, gaining a better position just before you strike. Uh, so it is an encounter power. It, it does use your, it has the beast uh, keyword as well as martial and weapon. It's a standard action. Uh, it is the, the melee range is uh, your, basically your weapon or the beast range uh, within one square or five feet, uh, effect before the attack, both you and your beast companion can shift two squares. So you can sort of close in on the enemy before you make the attack roll. Uh, the attack is strength versus armor class, and on a hit, it is two weapon dice, uh, plus your strength modifier for damage. So it's pretty standard for, you know, a, an encounter ability. It's a bit more powerful than your standard attack. However, if you chose for your companion a cat, a spider, or a wolf, the attack deals extra damage equal to your wisdom modifier. So again, it's a way that your animal companion can indirectly um, affect your attack, like benefit your attack, or like with, with the predator strike, how you can help benefit the, uh, the, your beast ability to attack. So there's a lot of abilities that kind of work in that manner. There are also some abilities, especially when you get into your daily abilities, where you get to make basically two different attacks, uh, one of which it will be you yourself as the character, and the other one will be the beast companion. So it might be that your beast makes the first strike and then it opens the opponent up for you to make an attack against them, or it could be the other way around, but there are other abilities that you can get. Again, most of them are like your daily powers or your higher level abilities where you do get to make multiple attacks. It's just one is the beast and one is you, which again, I think is actually kind of a cool way of, uh, of going about it. And it's a nice little synergy between you and the animal companion. And even though, like I said, normally to have the animal just attack on its own, you have to sacrifice your attack. They do give you plenty of abilities uh, that you would probably more than likely choose before you would choose um, to just sacrifice for a standard attack. Uh, and they have a lot of abilities that, again, they complement each other well. You know, your animal companion might attack, however, you might provide some sort of bonus to it. Um, you could distract the enemy so that it affects their armor class, or you provide extra damage, or the other way around. So I actually kind of like the way that they handle that uh, quite a bit. There are also abilities in here as well, just for regular archery or two up and fighting rangers. So not everything in here is designed specifically around uh, you and your animal companions. So you do actually gain some nice new abilities um, beyond just what you would choose for the, the Beastmaster version. But the, um, the bulk of the abilities in here are based around your animal companion. There are also some feats here as well towards the end of the book, which I'm just going to Flip to hopefully really quickly here, uh, including an epic level feat. 
or an epic tier feat once we get it here. So for the Ranger, uh, as an epic level, there is a feat called Quick Beast Command, which allows you to command your beast to attack as a minor action instead of a standard action. So it takes until you get to like the epic tier in order to do that. Um, but once you get there, then you, both of you can make you know your normal attacks in a round, which I think is, again, really, really cool. And it's a decent amount of balance because it is something that takes a while to get there. And by the time it gets there, it's not overpowered. It's just something that sort of helps out with the uh, with the situation. And again, you're commanding your animal companion to make just a basic attack, so they won't get to benefit from any of your at will or daily or encounter abilities that they might normally be able to. But it's still really cool that you know eventually you do get the ability to command them as a quick action instead of it being like a standard action to get them to attack. So overall, this is a really really cool book. And it does add a lot of interesting stuff in here. I've only really looked at the Ranger things. There are also some Paragon Paths for the Ranger as well, some of which I really like. The Silver Archer one, I really like. I think there's a, a Sharpshooter one as well, which is really cool. The Horizon Walker, which I think was actually a Prestige class from the uh, 3.5 Dungeon Master's Guide. And there are some uh, Paragon Paths that are built around the Beastmaster options. So again, really cool stuff there. Uh, yeah, so I think overall, um, the Beastmaster version of the Ranger is awesome. I really like the way that they handled it. I think it works great as a uh, third combat style, because that's really what it is. Um, it's, you know, you and your animal companion acting in tandem, uh, fighting together, and sort of feeding off each other for your attacks. And they handled it again in a really, really decent way. It's not overpowered. It's not something where it's going to outshine everybody else, uh, but it does function well, and I think there was just a lot of good design behind that, and that's something that, you know, I really wish would have been incorporated into the Ranger by default, but I do have access to it now uh, because of Martial Power, and I'm going to keep my eye out because if uh, DMs Guild or drive Through RPG ever does present the other power books, at least Martial uh, or at least uh, Arcane, Divine, and Primal Power, the first books in those series, I will absolutely get these because, uh, you know, people's opinion or comments in the Ranger video, plus, you know, actually ordering one of these books has really kind of changed my opinion on the, the Power books, and I kind of regret not picking them up now. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's the Beastmaster Ranger, at least some of the, the concepts behind it and how it's implemented. Let me know what your thoughts are of the Beastmaster. Uh, is that your preferred way to play a Ranger? Some people have already answered that question, but for those that haven't, let me know in the comments below. And I just want to thank everyone for their comments in that 4th edition Ranger video. Uh, because if it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't have ever thought about uh, picking up this book, and now that I have it, I regret taking this long to get it, and I hope I can get the others at some point as well. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, my video on the D&D Essentials Ranger classes. Those will be coming out sometime in the next couple of weeks. Like I said, I'm still kind of getting over a bit of an illness, and I do have some other books that I do need to do videos on first, but that is something that is coming. I just thought this would be a nice little... Uh, you know, in between uh, with the two different uh, fourth edition versions of the Ranger class. So thank you guys again very much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you all next time. Until then, take care.